reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went home with his disciples and such a crowd collected that they could not even have a meal. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to take charge of him, convinced he was out of his mind. The scribes who had come down from Jerusalem were saying, Beelzebul is in him, and it is through the prince of devils that he cast devils out. So he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot last. And if a household is divided against itself, that household can never stand. Now, if Satan has rebelled against himself and is divided, he cannot stand either. It is the end of him. But no one can make his way into a strong man's house and burgle his property unless he has tied up the strong man first. Only then can he burgle his house. I tell you solemnly, all men's sins will be forgiven and all their blasphemies. But let anyone blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and he will never have forgiveness. He is guilty of an eternal sin. This was because they were saying an unclean spirit is in him. His mother and brothers now arrived and standing outside sent in a message asking for him. A crowd was sitting round him at the time the message was passed to him. Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking round at those sitting in a circle about him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of God, that person is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God called to the man, where are you? Where are you? The readings of today's Mass are all about what we may call mental gymnastics. Or to put it more simply, we are to look at ourselves and God asks us, where are you? Where are you in the journey of life, in the journey to salvation? And where we are depends not only on how we see things and people. It depends much more on what God thinks of us. And particularly nowadays, when people don't want to admit the truth about themselves. They don't want to acknowledge their weakness and their failures and to accept themselves as they really are. And so today, God asks you as he asks Adam, where are you? Now the scripture says, Adam says, I was naked. Erom is the Hebrew word for naked. And some commentators say, 
the sacred writer meant a pun because the word Aram, almost like Aram, in Hebrew means cunning. Adam was cunning. He was so cunning he tried to hide from God. He played the blame game. Something that we know very much about, unfortunately, in our own lives. The blame game. And so we find Adam begins by blaming God. You gave me this woman. And then he blames his wife. And she, in turn, blames the devil. Now I'm going to give you a little example of a blame game which occurred shortly, not so long ago. And we are well accustomed to blame games in our own life, and particularly among politicians. <laughs> now I emphasize this is a true story. It's not what we call sometimes a priest story. Short while ago, a gentleman who had an office near Bishop's High School, the office was broken into and the gentleman was mugged. So he went immediately to report to a police station, which I will not name, at a time I will not mention, and on the day, I will not mention. And he sat down there and placed his cell phone on the counter of the police station and sat down to wait. And then he saw a hand come over the counter and slip the cell phone off the counter and he stood up just in time to see it slip into a policeman's pocket. <laughs> and the poor gentleman was so traumatized, he said nothing. Now, let us imagine how this police thief excused himself by playing the game, the blame game. Someone who was careless left their phone on the counter and I put it into safekeeping because no one steals from a police station. And if that gentleman who came in owned the cell phone, why did he not speak out? He is to blame. And then maybe I was tempted either by the devil or Charlie Charlie. <laughs> now I am speaking to the police thief. If you are listening to me, please put the money for which you sold the cell phone in an envelope marked phone and send it to living water. <laughs> so that I may give the money back to the owner of the cell phone. Now, what's wrong with this blame game? It is destroying us and the country. First of all, when we play the blame game, we are destroying other people's good name. We are putting them down, we are denigrating them, we are destroying their character. Don't play the game, the blame game. And secondly, when we play the blame game, we do not admit our own sinfulness, our own failures, our own guilt. And we had in the beautiful psalm in today's mass of God's mercy. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Lord, forgive my guilt. 
redeem me from my iniquity. And even more in the response, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If we admit our sinfulness, God will forgive us. If as a nation we admit our failure, God will forgive the community of our nation also. And the basic reason why we play the blame game is because we have sinned or because we are covering up for our blatant inefficiency. Or because, as St. Paul said in today's epistle, we are attached to material things. So we can pray with St. Paul, Lord, may we have no eyes for things that are visible, but all for things that are invisible. For visible things last only for a time, but the invisible things are eternal. And let us look for a few moments at the Gospel. We are told that some of Jesus' relatives, seeing what seemed to be his excessive devotion to serving the people, said he's out of his mind, he's crazy. We might ask ourselves, what is our attitude today to mentally challenge the people? Do we despise them, fear them, ignore them, help them? Do we believe, as some people do, they should be put into an institution? Years ago, people were more tolerant. We had what we called characters in Port of Spain. We had tourist Annie, who was downtown. And we had Mahal who drove his invisible car all over the city. And they had a good life. They had plenty of idiosyncrasies, but they were tolerated. Jesus was supposed to be mad. When I was in Nigeria, I was edified to find the people said of those mentally challenged, they are with God. Beautiful phrase, they are with God. And that was the way with Jesus, presumed mad. He certainly was with God. Unfortunately, the scribes took that up as meaning he was possessed by the devil because that was what some Jews considered of people out of their mind. And therefore Jesus told the Jews, if I am the prince of devils, you are saying that I am casting out minor devils. But I'm telling you I am not the prince of devils. If Satan rebelled against himself, he cannot stand. And then Jesus says that if anyone blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, he will never have forgiveness. If you are making evil into good and good into evil, God will offer you his forgiveness, but you won't take it. Let's join in the prayer of today's Mass. O oh God, may we by your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. And then finally in the Gospel we have a true view of life and of people. Anyone who does the will of God and that person is my brother and sister and mother. Not that we shouldn't love our own human family, but we should love our fellows in Christ even more. So let us ask ourselves, do we really love our family? Do we share with them, forgive them, help them as we should? 
and all the more then we should have a more wonderful and valuable association with our fellow brothers and sisters. So let us pray the Lord today to avoid the blame game. Let us tell our God, I was in the garden and I heard your voice. Where are you? And I am coming now to find you. Lord, help me to be with you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.